Hello everyone and welcome to 9 Inch Charge. Today I'm going to show you my method for making snow and ice bases. What's great about this method is that there's no really difficult techniques here, but there are quite a few different ones that you may find useful in making your own bases. Just before we start, if you enjoy this video, please give it a like, and if you'd like to see more like this in the future, please subscribe. As you can see, I've got my base here and I've primed it white. The reason that I've done that is because the first paint that we're going to apply today is a Grelin Earth. A Grelin Earth is a technical paint from Games Workshop and it contains a crackle medium. And what that means is that as it dries, it will crack and split apart and it will look like, um, like cracked ice when it's all done and painted. And we want the cracks underneath to be white and not to be black. So that's why it's really important that you, you prime your base white before you start this technique. Now you can see me just adding it kind of wherever I want there to be ice on the base. Um, and I'm applying it quite thick. It's important to apply it probably, I would say, one to two mils thick at least. The thicker it is, the bigger the cracks will be. So I've just connected the dots here between these, these, two, these two parts, have a little bit of a stream or something in the middle that's, that's frozen. And once you're happy with it, just leave it to dry. This paint does take an awful long time to dry. You are talking one to two hours here. So get yourself some refreshments. Um, go, go put the kettle on, do something else or grab yourself a beer and uh, come back when it is all dry. So now the crackle paint is all dry, as you can see, and inside the cracks it is nice and white, exactly how we wanted it. So the next stage now is to paint over this. We're gonna make this nice and white. So I've just sprayed this base white, as you can see, and the next thing we're going to do is to make the ice look a bit blue, and you can use any light blue that you've got. Um, here I've got Lothen Blue, and I'm just going to water it down to make a glaze. I'm using the air paint, which is already quite watery, and I'm gonna add a little bit more, but you can use any kind of blue paint that you've got. Um, and I'd say probably water it down uh, one part paint to two parts water, and that'll make a nice glaze or wash. But play around with it um, and give it a good mix until you're happy with the consistency. I think I just came in and added just a slightly little bit more pigment to it. There we go, and then once you're happy with that, you can start applying your wash all over the base. And what this will do is it will run into the cracks and it will work sort of like a contrast paint that we've been using before. And it will just it will just pull really nicely and go over where you want it to go and it will give a really nice ice blue effect. I've put it just everywhere on the base, even on the flat areas, just so you can have a look at kind of how it will look. Cause some people might want to leave it here just after the crackle paint and say, I've got a nice base. Um, which is something that you could you could do or you can carry on with the tutorial and go on to all the next steps So here I am just touching up an area here or there and then we'll come back when this is nice and dry Once this is dry, this is looking quite icy already, but the next thing we're going to do is to add a dry brush of white. So here I'm using Scar White from Citadel. If you're unfamiliar with the technique of dry brushing, simply load up your brush as you usually would, get a bit of kitchen paper or something like that and start to work the paint out of the brush until it is relatively dry. And then take your brush and just start working up and down in horizontal lines all over the, uh, the surface here. And what will happen is the paint will just catch on the very top raised edges and that will add a really nice effect on here, sort of like a highlight, um, but a little bit rougher, which is ideal for something like this. And as you can see, the more we add the white, the more we just add a little bit of a bit of texture to it. So it's not just a flat blue. It does really start to look like ice because ice obviously has all different shades of blue and white in it once you start to examine it more closely. So I'm going back in for another go on the dry brush just to finish it off. And once that is done, we're ready to move on to the next stage. With the dry brush now complete, we're going to go into all the areas where we didn't add the crackle paint with a bit of Citadel Sterling Mud to add a bit of ground. This is another technical paint made by Citadel and it adds a really muddy texture. Again, it takes a little while to dry, so just be patient with it. Once you've got it everywhere that you want, obviously you can see me pushing it around here and just playing with it, making sure the texture is just right and it's where exactly where I need it to be. But when that's done, we'll come back and give it a dry brush. 
as you can see I'm still playing with it I'm still not quite happy with the texture yet it takes a little bit of playing with but uh, once you get there I think the results are really great With the Sterling Mud now dry, we're going to go in and do a couple of dry brushes. So the first one is Steel Legion Drab. Uh, this is a great paint. I love Steel Legion Drab. I use it on almost everything that I paint. It's just a really great brown color. So we're going to dry brush this over the Sterling Mud because it's it's slightly lighter than the Sterling Mud. And this will just add a bit of texture to it and just make it look less flat. So just a really quick dry brush. Just work it in as much as you can. And then we're going to come back in with another dry brush to make the earth look a bit frosted over. So once that's done, the next dry brush we're going to add is Blue Horror. So this is a really, really pale blue, and it does look like frost has settled on the ground or on the mud. Um, you know, when you come out in the mornings and the ground almost cracks under your feet because it's so cold, uh, this will add this kind of effect for you. So just be aware that it is really, really light. So you want to do a very light dry brush. You don't want to overpower all of the browns, as you can see as I put it on. You know, it does go on and it makes quite an effect straight away. So just be careful when you put it on. Make sure that your brush is nice and dry, that you haven't loaded it up too much. And there we are. We've got some really nice frosted looking ground there to go next to our ice. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add another technical paint. We're going to add Valhalla Blizzard. And this is a snow, snowy paint. It gives a really nice snow effect. And I find the best way to apply it is to just kind of shovel it onto your brush and then dollop it on and then work it around in all the different places where you want it. Now, it doesn't really matter where you put it so much. I've tried to concentrate it more on the ground than I would on the ice just because I have a feeling that it would settle more there than other places. But there's no reason why the snow isn't going to settle on top of the ice as well. So just move it around, keep working it in as best you can. And once that's done, we will move on to the next step. But you could move on to the next step or you could leave it here. I mean, this base is really starting to take shape now. But I think the last couple of steps really do just add a little nice few touches. So let's let this dry and then we'll move on from here. With the snow effect now dry, we're ready to add some tufts. Now these are Gamer Grass Alien Turquoise Tufts, and I think they're supposed to be used to contrast sort of Martian, red Martian bases. Um, but actually, what I've found is that the turquoise colour sort of goes up to a white and it does look really great. It does look like they're frosted over, so that's why I've been using these. They are self-adhesive, but just to be safe, I am putting a little bit of super glue down just before I apply them. So I've added a little spot there, and I'm going to put a few tufts here and there. And they'll look really great. It will look like like frosted over grass there. So just put them wherever you like. Obviously, I'm trying to put them on top of the mud because they wouldn't grow out of the ice. So I've just put a couple in. And I think I'm going to put one more in. I try to use them quite sparingly, actually. Three is probably the most that I would use on a, on a single base. So here goes the last one just over here. With that all done, we're ready to go on to the final stage, and that is to add a bit of blood, because although this is in a snowy field, this is also a battleground. And to do that, we're going to add some Blood for the Blood God Technical. This is a technical paint that I absolutely swear by. I use it on all sorts of things, like the ends of weapons and bottoms of shields. Um, what's great about it is, is that it retains a shine uh, long after you've, you've applied it, and it does look like fresh blood that's not dried in. Some people I know like to add a little bit of non oil to it to make it flow a bit better, but I think it's fine just to add straight out of the pot. I'm using a really fine brush here and just stippling. There's all different kinds of techniques you can use. I know some people like to put it on a, on like a toothbrush or something and flick it on so you get little flecks, um, but I think that's a bit messy. So I'm just doing it this way with my brush, and as you can see, I'm adding it into the snow and into the ground, and also I'm putting a little bit on the top of the tufts as if some like splattered onto the grass, and it catches really well on there. It actually look, forms little droplets which is really great so just adding a little bit more on there and then we'll be ready to call this base done and there you have it that's how I've been making my snow bases I've just rebased my entire stormcast army on these because I love them so much uh, let me know what you think in the comments I hope this works out for you and happy wargaming happy hobbying this has been Nine Inch Charge and I'll catch you next time